Um, so two things. Uh, uh, it's one thing to receive, but it's another thing to treasure, which means to esteem highly. And, uh, and that seems to be the first step that is given here in this exhortation. If you receive my words and treasure my commandments, commands within you. Okay. Um, that's Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And uh, Jeremiah 12 um, talks about, uh, uh, you know, 12 and verse verse 2 almost actually talks about the unrighteous, chapter 12. If you look at verse verse 2 and the second part of it, is, it says, you are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. You are near in their mouth and far from their mind. You know, so, so something's happening here that, um, like, the distinct the difference between pronouncing or using the name of the Lord, taking up the name of the Lord, even saying the things that are right, sounding right, and what's happening deep within, right? Um, and what the Lord is looking for is going beyond the superficial, going beyond the what we can see and hear uh, to the heart of the matter, right? Which is what is going deep within? You know, are we treasuring? You know, in addition to receiving, are we treasuring? And the same thing we see here. Uh, Jeremiah is saying, you know, with regard to the righteous, but it can happen very well happen to uh, uh, us as believers as well that we are in their mouth. I mean, he, his name is in there in our mouths, but is it really? Are we retaining in our minds as well? Which means that our meditation um, thoughts and what occupies our minds, uh, what occupies our imagination, right? Um, is uh, is a lot. Are we treasuring in that sense, right? The the word of God, the um, uh, the precepts of God, uh, and everything else. Are we treasuring, right? So I just wanted to leave us with that question, and as we pray today, right? So let's uh, let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we, we come before you, Lord, in all humility, God. We come before you, Lord, as uh, as we read your word, as we read your word just now. Um, Lord, you desire for us, your desire for us is to, that we would receive, <clears throat> first and foremost, and that we would treasure. That we would just not be calling upon your name, your name and your word and your ways, Lord, will not be just things that we speak out from our mouths, but really, oh God, that everything about your word, the principles will take root in our minds, in our hearts, that there will be a treasuring, there will be an esteeming of who you are and your word, your ways, God, deep within us, Lord deep within us, Lord, enable us to do that even today or if for some reason, if if kind of moved away, if for some reason we have lost that sense of awe and wonder and and God, if we have stopped treasuring you in our hearts, treasuring your word in our hearts, Lord, I pray that we would come back to that place of treasuring God, of something of great, immense value, priceless value, that we would treasure your word, treasure your ways, treasure you in our hearts. Yes, Lord, we choose to do that this morning. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, hello to those who joined during the prayer. Um, yeah. Uh, let's continue from where we, uh, where we ended last class. So we looked at, um, the, um, we were looking at restoration of our soul, right? Uh, restoration of our mind, will, emotions, intellect, um, imagination, and everything. Um, you know, we, we saw the problems of the soul and uh, the various ways because of which um, there could be problems in that soul realm, in that area. And and we, we saw that God's desire, God's will for us is that uh, this area, very important area, be restored. Because it's going to uh, drive you know, all other areas. And it's connected, so connected to our actions, so connected to um, the things that we um, uh, 
things that we plan and analyze and and do and so our destiny itself right so it's so connected so this area god wants wants us to thrive you know we saw that in 1 Thessalonians 5 and the last few verses where it says that when may the god preserve may our god preserve us whole spirit soul and body now, until it's coming again may your soul whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord so that's that's um, god's desire and will right so we saw that uh, well god wants to restore but what is the basis for that restoration right what is the basis meaning what on what do we base our belief on on what do we base our faith on uh, all this you know um, uh, unshakable um, conviction that yes, God wants me to be well in this area, that I don't have to endure and suffer and just go through, but God wants me to be well in this area. So what do we base on? So obviously it's based on the word of God and we need to know where, you know, um, where it is, it, is it stated so we can, our faith can grow in this, so we can meditate on it and uh, we can confess and we can be strong in this. And not only for our own selves, but also for uh, the sake of others whom God entrusts to us or brings our way so we can give be a you know a source of hope like we can be a vessel to bring hope to bring restoration and healing right so uh, we saw that god restores our soul and that's the uh, testimony of the psalmist right he says in psalm 23 and uh, he says that god restores our, uh, my soul uh, so let me let me just uh, share the share the notes <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so Psalm 23, verse 3, uh, the psalmist says, He restores my soul. And He restores everything that is battered, that is, uh, that uh, I'm hurting in the, in the realm of my soul. Uh, he's the one who restores my soul. And He brings it back um, to a place of thriving and flourishing. Okay, so um, so what is the basis for that? We saw that it's a journey, it's a process, uh, and it can be instantaneous, but it, it is also a process, right? So healing and deliverance, emotional healing and deliverance, is something that is provided, that is given to us uh, on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross, through the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. We, we see that, yes, we have received salvation, we received forgiveness of sins, um, we, have, uh, we are born again um, through the, the work of Christ, that the, the entire debt of sin was paid for, and all that is, uh, you know, uh, we know all, all that is there uh, because of the redemptive work of the Lord on the cross. And uh, we see that it includes right, this restoration, this healing, of our emotions and deliverance. Okay, so when we look at the finished work of the Lord on the cross, uh, let's just go to Isaiah chapter fifty-three, right? Um, Isaiah. Um, maybe we can just read from uh, verses three onwards. Um, let me just take it up here. Um, okay. Okay, Isaiah fifty-three um, verses uh, three, four, and five. Right, so verse five is the one which talks about great transaction, the great exchange that happened. Okay, so fifty-three was uh, three says he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and did not esteem him, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Okay, and uh, when we look at the, the Hebrew, there it means uh, the word that is used there uh, is uh, the the word which is translated in, into the English as griefs. Okay, it means a disease. It means sickness. Right. Uh, it is also translated into anxiety and and so on. Right. So. It, so he has carried, he has borne our griefs. And what has he carried? 
he has carried our sorrows. Okay. And uh, that word means grief, pain. Okay. Grief or anguish of pain. Makob. Right. He has carried our sorrows. And, uh, and then it says uh, that we did this team stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded, he was bruised for our transgressions. So transgressions talking about great sin. He was bruised for our iniquities. Right. So we see that, uh, well, this is what happened. This is what the Lord carried for our sake. He carried a physical ailment, talks about sickness. He also carried our anguish, our sorrow, our grief, our pain. Okay, and then we see that uh, at the end of verse five, that by his, the, I'm sorry, the punishment for our peace, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Right? By his stripes we are healed. That because of this great act uh, of this, this work. Of redemption of the cross uh, by this sacrifice we are healed okay and, and that's the confidence that we have every time when we go and pray right and because of this finished work um what, whatever he purchased whatever he redeemed us from right it is ours right so it says here that uh, the cross actually provided made a way for us to receive this um, uh, healing for our emotions, healing for our deliverance. Okay, so because of the work of the cross, let's look. Let's look a little deeper into what is it right, that we are delivered from. Right? Uh, Colossians one verses thirteen and fourteen. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. So, so it means that, um, you know, John 10, 10 talks about the Lord Jesus uh, spoke out the agenda of the enemy. Okay, very clearly described John 10 verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Okay, so there's a stealing and killing and destroying that is happening and stealing could be stealing of you know, when we, whatever, you know, physical health, emotional health, uh, in, uh, and killing and destroying, right? All that God has instituted and all that is good, a perversion, a twisting of all that is good, the enemy comes to do that. But the Lord has come that we might have life and life in its fullness. Okay? So the cross talks about this great turnaround, um, this great. Um, um, uh, transaction exchange that has happened. So he has delivered us because of the cross. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, which means from the clutches of the enemy, from the influence of the enemy. He has delivered us and he has conveyed us into, uh, into light, into the kingdom of the sun of the light. So when we talk about kingdom, we are talking about rule, we're talking about rule and reign, and uh, and the scripture says that okay, he has um, conveyed us into the rule and reign of the Son. Right, so that's that's wonderful, um, uh, that wonderful news, and uh, and that's because of the cross. And um, let me just open up thirteen Galatians one thirteen. Okay, from the power of darkness. I just want to look at that word power, which is uh, you know delegated authority. From the exousia or the delegated authority, or, the, or we could say, uh, from the capacity, from the uh, potential, from the influence of the enemy. Right. So he has delivered us, and where has he conveyed us? He has conveyed us into the rule and reign, the realm of the sun's reign. Right. He has conveyed us into his kingdom. Okay. So, um, well, Satan has no influence or no right over us the the level of influence that the enemy has is is the kind of permission that we give the enemy now it can happen through a lie we believe a lie we give the enemy uh, authority or influence over our lives um, maybe we are uh, we are tempted we are you know we give in 
and we give in to the influence of the enemy. Maybe we are deceived, we give in to the interest of the enemy. Maybe we are intimidated, you know, so fear, we are in fear, uh, uh, something that the enemy might do, we give in to the uh, influence of the enemy, right? So we see that um, the level of influence that the enemy has is directly proportional to you know, what we allow, what we have given, right? which is why um, we see that we need to stand strong, right? Uh, resist, which means to stand strong and say no, and submit, submit to God, submit, come under the leadership, come under the, you know, the, the, the authority, the rule and reign, the realm of the rule and reign of the king. Submit to God, submit to his um, lordship, submit to the authority of the word, submit to the influence of the Holy Spirit. And the, the, it's a dual responsibility, resist and he will, the enemy will flee. Right. So, uh, so uh, Colossians 1.13 talks about that. And he has conveyed as he has already done it because of the uh, work of the cross. So, so the enemy does not have influence over our lives. The enemy does not have any kind of authority over our lives. Right. We need to uh, be firm about that. We need to be convinced, convinced, convicted, and convinced about that. Uh, Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. Right. Uh, so this is the, the reason he came. This is what he did. Um, let's uh, reach the verse eighteen. So, um, so uh, Paul is actually talking, uh, sharing his testimony, right? He's sharing his testimony, and uh, and uh, he, he's talking about the whole thing that happened on the uh, way to Damascus, and he's having this conversation with King Agrippa. So. Uh, so that's in, that's a context in which he says this. He, he recounts the words of the Lord Jesus, and uh, it says here. Uh, uh, let's say let's read from verse uh, fifteen onwards. So I said, "Who are you, Lord?" And he said, "I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you." For this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of things which I will yet reveal to you, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I send you now to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Okay, so the uh, Lord is actually commissioning Paul, um, who's just had an encounter and saying, you know, this is what I'm sending you to. You know, you, I'm sending you uh, to the, uh, I will deliver you and I'm, I'm sending you. This is what I want to do. I want to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. Okay, open the eyes of the understanding, give them revelation and um, so that they are not spiritually blind anymore, that they get their understanding to turn them from darkness to light, uh, which means, this is it, this is the contrast, from the power of Satan to God, from the power of Satan, from the hold of Satan to God himself, right, that they may receive forgiveness and so on. So, uh, so this is the, this is the reason that he died on the cross, and this is what he accomplished on the cross, the work of the cross. So you see, it goes a lot deeper, and it's not, Yes, it, it it you know the work of the cross justifies us. It's a one-time thing, but also uh, as we go through life, uh, as we get this understanding that yes, I'm in a different, I'm under a different authority now. I'm no longer under that authority. I'm no longer under that influence. The enemy might try. The enemy might try to make some inroads in all this, but um, and it but it's all come to an end because I have been conveyed into a different uh, authority, to an authority uh, of the uh, of God. Right. So we we understand that. Okay. Let's look at Romans five and verse twelve. Okay. Romans five and verse twelve. Um, through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Okay. It talks about the source. Talks about the entry of the influence of the enemy. Right. And if you look at verse uh, chapter six and verse six, and also verse fourteen. 
what does it say? Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So we should no longer be slaves of sin, no longer be uh, under the authority or the influence of sin. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So there's been a change. There's been a change of dispensation. There's a change of ownership. There's a change of influence. Um, so sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are under grace. Okay. So just like the first through the first man, Adam, uh, through the first Adam, uh, we have come under the, or the entire humanity came under the authority and the influence of the enemy. Um, through the last Adam, we have been purchased, we've been taken back, right? So uh, it includes our emotional health and well-being. It includes, um, you know, all that. So uh, we see that we've been taken from darkness into light. The same goes for generational bondages and you know things from um, what is what is what is handed over from generation to generation. Let's, maybe let's just read Proverbs, uh, Peter chapter, First Peter chapter one and verse eighteen. Where it says, uh, uh, "Knowing that you were not redeemed from corruptible things like silver or gold, uh, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers." Talks about the previous generation, what you received, um, what you received. By either teaching what you you know received otherwise, which was handed over from generation to generation, but you were actually redeemed from corruptible. Um, uh, we were not redeemed with corruptible things, um, but it's uh, it, it talks about. But with the verse nineteen talks about the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot. Uh, spot. Okay, so we've been taken from darkness into light. The second thing is from curse to blessing. Okay, so. The redemptive work of the Lord on the cross has moved us out, taken us out from the curse of the law. Okay. Uh, when you look at the curse of the law, it, it means that, okay, when we saw that, okay, a curse is like a negative blessing, bringing in negative things into our lives, a promise of negative things into our lives. Blessing is a promise of good things um, that God has in store for us, uh, bringing, it, bringing that into our lives, right? Galatians 3, 13, 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay. And um, it's it's amazing when we actually consider the work of the cross and we consider um, what we have through the cross, what we have come into because of the cross, what we are receiving, continuing to receive because of the cross. It's amazing, right? So from curse to blessing, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon, you know. So this great exchange, we have, instead of the curse, we have received the blessing. Colossians 2 and verse 14, having wiped out, this is what he did on the cross, he wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So the law gave us the standard. The law, in a way, was actually protective, gave us the boundary, but the law also had consequences. Or had consequences, or the disobedient um, was met with consequences, and um, we see that list in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, right? The the consequence of obedience, which means blessing, and the consequence of disobedience, uh, which is all these curses, right? Call, and and you see, look at this blessing, and you look at the curse; it affects all realms. Like financially, relationally, uh, materially, uh, and physically, uh, emotionally, and so on. So you see that it, 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 uh, it is actually a wholesome package. Right? If you look at the curse, you understand. Oh yeah, it's it, it, it's actually uh, all these areas of my life are actually open to the curse, or were open to the curse of the law, and. Uh, now that I'm redeemed, all these areas of my life are now coming under 
this realm of blessing right uh, because of the cross right? so we see that yeah i have actually been taken out from darkness into light i have been taken out from curse to blessing um the third thing that we see is that the defeat of satan the defeat of satan and christ's victory over satan is our victory because he has actually handed over that victory to the cross uh, on the cross to the church right because we walk in the victory that he has actually got for us right um you know isaiah 53 12 talks about the fact that he was poured out his soul was poured out unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and so on um the easy to read version says this i will treat him as one of my people i will give him the rewards of one who wins in battle and he will share them with his powerful ones right uh, he will divide the spoil that's the old english and he will share them he will share the rewards with his powerful ones so that victory that he got he has shared that reward with us um Colossians 2 and verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Okay. Um, Hebrews 2 verses 14 and 15, in as much as then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage it's talking about us right releasing from the fear of death or you know the torment of death fear is torment right anguish in the emotional realm fear of death uh, all the while subject to bondage because of this fear you know, being in a place of imprisonment so we have been set free and we have been uh, released into this newness. Right? So uh, let's just go over that again, right? Uh, we have received uh, wholeness. We have been uh, released from darkness into light, conveyed into light, um, and from all the, the realm of every curse, we have been released into blessing. And all this has happened because of the finished work of the cross and yeah about the victory that he won for us is actually uh the victory that he won over satan is our victory that victory is ours uh, as the body of christ as the one who has given us his uh, authority um so that victory is ours as well so this is something for us to internalize this is something for us to you know take note of and walk in um whenever there is torment whenever there is uh, you know something that we see that um which is going on a down and downward spiral you know, in the realm of our emotions in the realm of our thoughts um you know we need to understand that well the work of the cross covers this as well the work of the cross you know the reach of the work of the finished work of the cross the reach of the victory is, is in this area also the redemption is in this area also so that's why we can boldly um, unashamed, unashamedly without any doubt um, receive right? and expect and have faith for things to change in the in the you know whatever sickness of the soul that we talked about right? and we can minister the same because Christ did for us. Christ did for the one to whom you are ministering and praying. And uh, so they can also journey into wholeness. Right? Okay. Now let's look at um, uh, let's look at the new creation life. Okay. So we saw looked at one of the basis, one of the foundations for uh, emotional wholeness, which is the finished work of the cross. The second thing is um, the very fact of uh, the very fact that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. We have new creation in Christ Jesus, which means that we have received something because of what happened. We have been made new. Okay. 
uh, first thing is the cross has changed. There's a lot of things. We have access to new things. We have you know been conveyed into uh, a, a new area of, of authority, and we have come under new authority. So here, the new creation itself, talking about us personally. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen and eighteen. Right? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away because behold, all things have become new. All things are of God. Okay, so we have been transformed. We have been conformed to the image of Christ. Um, so which means that everything that is not of him. Now this is important, right? We are in creation. We know that in the soul realm, we have new creation in our spirit. We know that. The soul realm was left untouched. We know that that is because of free will. Now, that unrenewed or untouched part of us, when we came uh, into the kingdom, right? when we became new creations, now we have the freedom and the authority to submit to God. We have the freedom and authority to, to renew it to renovate it with the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we see certain things in us, and we're not really proud of it, right? We see certain things, and we are we are actually uh, we are ashamed. Okay, certain habits, certain personality traits. Well, can that change? So we need to stop saying that I am like this only. I am like this only, and uh, and really blame it, and then really settle for that uh, for that realm of life. Right? Because God has called us to a higher realm. We are new creations, so we don't have to settle for anything less than what He has called us for, what He has invited us for. Right? So we are new creations. I'm born again. Yes, I'm born again in the spirit, and, and we've, we've learned about all that we have become in Christ, all the wonderful things that we are victorious, and, and so on. But we also know that the soul realm needs to experience this. The soul realm needs to be renewed to this truth. Right. So all that the enemy maybe has made inroads, all that the enemy has maybe, uh, you know, kind of, uh, 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 not just the enemy, but it, it could be even our own, um, you know, fleshly understanding or flesh, the choices that we have made in the flesh uh, or because of our unrenewed thinking. Okay. Now, we know that we can change. That is possible to change because we are new creations. Okay, so uh, you know this stubborn thing, this stubborn thinking, this stubborn temperament, um, this tendency, this inclination to blow up, this inclination to alienate uh, oneself, um, this tendency to you know just uh, uh, shut up myself, and uh, this coping mechanism that I've picked up over the years, or this trauma uh, and th this traumatic event that happened, and as a fallout of that. You know these things that I'm experiencing in my life, which has so deeply affected uh, personality. Well, that doesn't have to be there. Right? That can change. Why? Because I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Um, my my appetite can change. My desire, my action, my imagination, everything can change and will change when I continue to, you know, I'm just going back to Romans 6, when I continue to present every member to him, right? And Romans 12 talks about how we can renew. Right? So maybe things are so, so very weak in certain areas of our minds, you know, we're not, we just so get so weary and tired when we even start thinking about certain things and of the past. Um, the fact is this, Romans 6, 
Verse 13, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Now, presenting, which means to, to, uh, to consecrate, which means to, to surrender, right? to, to, to yield every member as instrument of righteousness to him. Right? And then it talks about the outworking of that. But still cannot have dominion over. So, you know, many, many times we think about that and then we, we think of action, right? sin, uh, an outworking of sin, an act of sin. Well, certain things that the sin has influence under also, you know, comes under that, right? In the sense that uh, maybe things that are withholding us back from, from really walking in the fullness of what God wants us to, um, things that are withholding us, things that are, you know, restraining us really um, in the emotion realm. Right? I mean, when things change in our mind and our emotions, then uh, then we see that things change in our life and action. Right, and that's why Paul says in Romans twelve very clearly, "Be transformed." So we're going to be looking at that uh, again. Right, he says, "Be transformed by the." Renewing. There is transformation. There is transformation that is possible. There is transformation that is available. And it's all tied down to the realm of our soul. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we can either conform to the world by not renewing, or we can be conformed to the image, new creation image, by renewing our, uh, our mind, our, our soul. Right. Okay. So we see that we are consecrated, we are purchased, we are redeemed, and, and all the good things that have happened because of who we are in Christ, because we are new creations. Now that's another basis why we can we can you know say that yes, you know this is the basis for my uh, my uh, restoration, the restoration of my soul. This is a basis for that. And I can boldly, very boldly, uh, step up and say, "Yes, um, I'm receiving this. I can pray for this. I can work towards this." And it's not, um, it's not something that that is against the will of God. It is something that Christ. Uh, it is there in the Word, uh, Word of God. It is very scriptural. It is something that I can be. I can be. I can uh, be fully confident of, and I can expect change to happen. So the thing is this, that, um, you know, when we know that this is the possibility, you know, this is how change can happen. So um, so then, then the thing is that the key for change, the key for restoration is not modification of behavior, right? So the, I mean, in, in one sense it is, right? Some certain choices that we, so we see that it's much deeper it is at the thought level. It is at the le level of emotions. It at the level of uh, receiving revelation and being convinced and acting out of it. So without the receiving of this revelation, without the receiving of this understanding, like when we try to change our, modify our behavior, there is no power. Okay? Because it's not based on truth. It could be based on fear. I must do this. It could be based on, you know, I'll do this and then I'll be accept accepted. Right? It's not based on truth. It's based on a lie. It's based on fear. It's based on torment, maybe. But when I base it on truth, when you base it on this, um, the revelation of what has happened to us, what was done for us, then when it's based on truth, then there is power. Right? Um, Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll just pause here a bit uh, before we go into the next one, which is authority. Um, any questions or any thoughts that you might have? We are looking at the basis for restoration, right? Okay, any, any questions, um, any thoughts at all, anything that you might want to share? Okay, so this is great news because you know the we see maybe as minister of God, you know, you, as ministers of God, we see that uh, well, 
you know, there are some stubborn things in people and people are unwilling to change and we've just tried, we've tried telling them, we've tried showing them. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not happening. We tried it, maybe threatening them, told them, okay, this is the this is the rule you need to follow. Then things happening. But uh, when it when we go a little deeper and expose people to the truth okay, and expose people to to what the, the potential they can be uh, or the potential that they have as new creation, what they have become, what they have actually inherited. This is actually who you are. And uh, the, the life, life that you're living or, um, you know, the kind of life that you're living restrained by your emotions and restrained by your fears is not the life that you're called to live. You know? And, uh, you know, the the people themselves are really frustrated when they live a life far below uh, what they're called to live, right? So, I mean, we expose them to the truth and then they get a revelation of the truth. Then there is, you know, uh, there is the uh, they're inspired to change and not only just ins inspired because inspiration without empowerment, you know, will just, <laughs> will just uh, fade away, right? Uh, but there's no consistent uh, action that happens. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked a question. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, right. So, Pastor, uh, yeah. if you are exposing someone to the truth, and mm. uh, let's say you've been doing that for years. I've been I'm mm. doing that for a girl for mm. years. Mm. And 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 you can't see any change. And sometimes you go them seeing worse. Like mm. uh, uh, I mean, if you if you didn't speak with them for uh, a month, you you see you see them getting worse. Mm. But but sometimes you feel like it's the same thing over and over again. It's mm. it's it's not a very different thing. Is also. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing that they are struggling with over and over and over again. And sometimes I, I think I get fed up. Mm. Like, uh, how many times should I uh, should yeah. I say? It? So, so in 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 at that point, what what you will actually do? What we should mm. actually do? Uh, yeah. yeah. So to really find out what are the triggers, you know, or maybe see so maybe the what you're saying is that. You've explored all those options, right? You've explored all those options, what the triggers are, what is causing them to go back into the cycle of sin and defeat, and you know, again, that cycle of failure and so on. Um, you know, so the thing is to say, okay, I've explored all these options, and then I have, you know, given them this, but still, uh, no, two two things. You know, are they unable to? Okay, because uh, sometimes it's a Okay, it's a, you know we know that the spirit, uh, uh, the lust. I mean, the flesh actually lusts against the spirit and contends against the work of the spirit. So it is a it is a fight um, to see whether you know is that fight still on, or are they you know are they unable to, or is it a problem of uh, a choice you know a decision? They are they do not want to. If they don't want to, then we can't do anything. Even God can't. <laughs> if they don't want to, no, there's nothing we can do. We can only inspire, motivate, encourage, which is what God does, right? Which is what the Holy Spirit does. He He inspires, He, he prompts, He convicts, and all that. But if a person is so hardened and they do not want to, you and I can't do anything. That's the sad reality. No, that's the sad truth. But if a person is willing, you know, from that place of not wanting to do anything, they come to a place of, even if the I'm giving, to, I'm willing to give it five percent. You know, I mean, there's a five percent chance there of them mm -hmm. saying, "I'm okay, I'm open." Then you know, there is every possibility of change. And uh, yeah. And and probably the person is also not got a grip of, um, you know, all this, right? This has happened, so maybe they're trying to do things, striving to do things, not really, uh, you know. Maybe they're also trying to modify behavior, but in the thought realm, it's still not happened. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Okay, best. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.
Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, just one more thing, probably. We have a couple of minutes, so let's look at... Uh, okay. So um, what we have also uh, received is the authority, okay? We have been given that authority, delegated authority by the Lord himself to resist the enemy, not just... So to resist, not tolerate, to actually evict you know, give that eviction notice and say, you are no longer welcome. Pack your bags and leave. Okay. This area, this room, you've been staying and uh, you've been messing it, messing things up. You've been making noise. You've been troubling. Uh, you've been playing the music way too loud when I want to sleep. And you've been, you know, creating all kinds of things. You've been knocking on the door, you've been making noise. Uh, when, I, when I want to rest, you are no longer uh, welcome. You have no right to remain. Now that authority, the Lord has given to us, which is something wonderful, right? So that authority to expel, that authority to evict the work of the enemy, the, who was carrying out that work, right? that authority, the enemy has, I mean, the Lord has given us. Now that authority to cast out uh, the, the demonic work in our own lives, uh, maybe the enemy is oppressing in the area of our uh, thought life, right? compulsive things. To break that compulsive you know, torment, the Lord has given us the authority to speak, to evict, okay? Uh, Mark 16, verse 17 and 18, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. So, and, and you know, the rest, you know, they will speak with new tongues, take up uh, serpents and drink everything, anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. And, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So all that follows. Um, but this is it, that we have been given the authority. So in my name is uh, meaning that in his place, uh, in his place, um, in his uh, authority. Right? Okay. Uh, question, what is the best way not to be offended of things one used to get it offended earlier? Uh, it seems to be an area of tree, but if it still bothers once in a while, okay. Um, Best way not to be offended is uh, is to, I mean a lot of things, but then one thing is to ask the Lord to give us eyes and heart to see people the way He sees. You know, so when when we see people the way He sees, we will not uh, you know take those words um, uh, too hard. Yeah. Sometimes we take ourselves very seriously, and uh, we get offended by the words of people. Um, so I would say that, but I, I think you can actually go through um, that book on offense. Um, um, so you, I think that that will be helpful. That yeah, you can go through that. But uh, offhand, I just you know see, asking God to give us that eyes and ear, uh, eyes and heart, uh, which means His perspective of the people, the very people who are repeatedly you know saying things, doing things, and and so we get offended you know, because of that. So to give us that. You know, and and to keep that fresh before our you know eyes, so that would be a way. Yeah. Okay, so we'll stop here, and we'll meet again uh, in tomorrow's class. Okay, right. God bless. See you guys. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you Thank guys. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Bye. Take care.